Apparently the punishment for theft is now execution. Police shot and killed a black man in Fairfax County, Virginia after he allegedly stole a pair of designer sunglasses from the mall. So first, let's get into what the police are having to say about this and more importantly, what they're not saying about the shooting. WJLA reported that according to police, two officers from the Tyson Urban team responded to a call about a theft from Nordstrom around 6.30 PM. Security said the man was hiding designer sunglasses. FCPD said an officer saw the man leave the store and enter the parking garage. The alarm activated as he left. Police identified Timothy McCree Johnson of Washington DC as the man shot and killed by officers. Authorities said Johnson ran through a mall parking garage and across a lot into a wooded area. FCD said officers gave him commands to get on the ground. While he was in the wooded area, two officers fired their guns, striking Johnson in the chest once, according to the police. They then rendered aid until first responders arrived, at which point Johnson was taken to a hospital where he was pronounced dead. We still don't know all the details, but apparently neither does Fairfax County Police Chief Kevin Davis, who said the department is still working to determine exactly what happened. More from that statement, we don't know what we don't know right now. At some point in time in the chase, something happened that's still under investigation that prompted our two Fairfax County police officers to discharge their firearms. That is under investigation. He didn't say what threat, if any at all, Johnson was posing to the officers when they fired their guns and killed him. But they promised they would release the body camera footage of the incident, which they are required to do within, I believe, a 30 day period. Neither of the officers were injured in the shooting. But let's get into a little bit more about what he said in his statement. Davis said Wednesday, he did not know if Johnson was armed. Officers used metal detectors and canines to search the wooded area where the shooting took place, looking to see whether Johnson may have discarded a weapon in the dense brush. No guns or other weapons have been found. Yet he told reporters it was too early to speculate as to what Johnson had in his hands or on his person and said the search continued. He was asked about what the police department's protocols were regarding the use of force specifically when it comes to officers firing their guns while chasing a suspect. To which he responded, I don't want to speculate why the officers discharge their firearms. Typically, if I understand your question, police officers, police officers will discharge their firearms when they're in fear for their lives or the lives of others. Our investigators, our detectives, both our major crimes detectives and our internal affairs detectives will ask all of these probing questions as the investigation moves forward. The officers were placed on restricted duty status while the case is being investigated as is protocol. I'll say they're looking for a gun in the woods, they're sending canines, they're using metal detectors. But I don't really think they're looking for a gun because I don't really think they believe he had a gun. I think that they're looking for a justification for their use of force in this case. And I, because they didn't find one on his person, they didn't find one in the immediate area searching. I don't think they're gonna find one. I think that they're just trying to find an excuse. Cenk, what's your take on this? Oh, For sure, so look, let me tell you two irrelevant things. Uh, one, if they find a gun like 200 feet away, it doesn't explain the shooting at all. So there's no question that the, he didn't have a gun on him. Otherwise, the cops would be saying, he had a gun, he had a gun, he had a gun, right? We've covered 100 of these stories. It's not like he's gonna have a gun and the cops aren't gonna tell you, right? Um, and it's obviously not anywhere near him because they searched. It's, it's been a while. They searched and searched and searched and searched. They still don't have a gun. So if you find a gun, it's obviously very far from the guy and hence wasn't on him when you shot him. Because whether he even had a gun 12 days later, earlier, 12 minutes earlier, or 12 seconds earlier is actually not that relevant. Because the only thing that's relevant is did you think that he was a threat to your life or someone else's life? And if he didn't already have the, if he didn't still have the gun, then he's clearly not a threat to you. Besides which, there is no gun. They just said we're still searching for a gun. But it's the threat to themselves or to others where there's a lot of wiggle room with law enforcement, as you know. And they can exploit that and likely will have to exploit that for the reasons that Jenk just articulated. They, you know, they're not going to find a weapon. So exactly what was going on there that officers determined was a threat to either themselves or to others. It's going to be very hard to come up with an explanation here, but it speaks to a much bigger problem, which is, you know, why they're chasing this guy down to begin with. And also, at what point do officers, quote, discharge their weapons? It's just such a way to clean up having murdered this guy in the woods. 
this, I think, is wrapped up with a lot of general issues about law enforcement and about the use of force. Yeah, well, Mark, look, let me just say, I think they should chase after the guy. I think they should arrest the guy. I think they should prosecute the guy. Uh, but uh, they're also now talking about how he's a quote unquote well known criminal, etc. Then, of course, his parents come out and say, no, he's a wonderful guy and he's uh, going to do X, Y, or Z. Also, totally irrelevant. Because let's, even if you assume he's an unbelievable criminal and he stole really expensive glasses, you still don't get to execute him in the woods. That's not how it works. That's not our justice system. So I'm in the camp of, yeah, for sure, arrest him. But don't if do it if you have to shoot him in the chest and murder him. Well, if you've got to chase him down to the woods behind a mall, Jenk, uh, at some point, I think those officers can you know spend their time in better ways. I guess that's kind of what I'm saying. Sure, if he's in the mall or if you can make the arrest, fine. If you can, uh, by now there are all kinds of AI that can pick up this guy as he walks into the mall. But uh, in future visits, I mean. But but to your point, of course. It's fine to arrest him. I'm just saying at some point, law enforcement can let go of chasing down a guy who stole, stole a pair of sunglasses. I don't know. I'm not on the I'm not on the criminal side, Jake. I'm just <laughs> making a point. No, that, you know. I know, I know. Look, I'm not saying that like, hey, that, that's exactly my point. My point is balance, Mark, right? So if, and if you say, hey, look, uh, like I laugh because Saying, hey, you should let the chase go once you're in the woods is not being on the side of the criminals, right? That's just saying, Mark is saying, that's where I would draw the line, where the chase has gotten too dangerous, futile, etc., right? right? And that's right. a perfectly fine way to balance it, right? But I, I'm just not in the camp of like, oh, who cares? No, I care, don't steal stuff. But I, but shooting him is completely unacceptable. I don't care if he stole the Mona Lisa. You don't get to shoot a guy in the woods who's unarmed. Period. And and the last thing I'll say is there's a feverish pitch that is achieved in these chases. That's why I kind of say let go of the guy once he's in the woods. Once you've been running and running and tripping and falling and hurting, I mean, there is a sense of pride and anger even that can draw. It's a fury that can go. I'm not saying who knows what was running through these guys' minds. But all I'm trying to say is, once you're in that chase mode, adrenaline takes over, and I wish that all the cops were better trained to handle this, but some of them are not. And they end up, for whatever reason, as I say, fury, anger, fear, discharging their weapons and killing a guy. Yeah, absolutely. And Jenk, I quickly want to go back to something that you mentioned earlier uh, about if the gun, they find a gun in the woods, it was too far away for him to even use the weapon anyhow. Um, because that sentiment was echoed by Diane Berkeley Alejandro, who is the lead advocate of ACLU People Power in Fairfax. And she gave a statement to the Washington Post and said, what Chief Davis doesn't say is significant. He doesn't say the officers even allege the suspect fired or threatened to shoot. They are looking for a weapon, but if the suspect dropped the weapon, that doesn't justify the force. And I also want to highlight some statements from the victim's mother who said, he's dead from shoplifting, not robbing someone with a gun, not burglarizing something with a gun. An unarmed shoplifter is now dead. He's not how the people try to portray him as this evil criminal with this long history. I believe that he ran and I believe that he was unarmed and I believe they shot and killed him. He's a father, he's a brother and he's my son. And I think that's a powerful statement because I've seen a lot of people discussing this online saying, well, if he didn't wanna die, then he shouldn't have stolen the sunglasses or he should have just listened to the cops, just accepting that, that a police officer can act as judge, jury and executioner over such a petty crime, over really any crime. But in this case, such a petty crime and that so many people are just willing to believe that and accept that. It's, you know, it's really disheartening. And, and look, you know how everybody's critical. So let's talk about the running for one second. So if he was one of the Bundy boys and he was on a Federal Reserve and he pointed weapons at the police, etc. But at that point, he didn't have a gun and he's running away from the cops and the cops shot one of those right wing extremists. The right wing would never stop talking about it. He would become a martyr to them forever and ever and ever. In fact, the cops shot one of the uh, the conspirators in the Bundy uh, in in the Oregon takeover that the, the Sun uh, uh, organized. And the guy was heavily armed and walking towards the cops and, and threatened to kill the cops. And they still think he was a martyr, right? They're like, oh, poor guy. And then they turn around like, did you know this guy shoplifted before? So I think it's totally okay to murder him in the woods. 
No, no, it's not. And if you don't know why they run, we covered a story a couple of days ago of a guy who ran. You know why? Because the last time the cops had arrested him, they handcuffed him and beat the living crap out of him, knocked out a couple of his teeth, and broke his nose. So he thought, well, if I, you know, uh, let them handcuff me, they might, you know, rearrange my face again. So that's why he ran. So now, having said that, guys, don't run from the cops. It makes it much more likely that they're going to kill you. Should they? Of course not. Of course not, right? But it, but look at how many times it happens. So I know it's a damned if you do or damned if you don't, but I just to stay alive, don't run away from them. Thanks for watching the Young Turks. Really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get Playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So, all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.